Hello everyone and welcome back to the Eleusinian Society. I just got a ring light and my golly is it reflecting off my glasses like crazy. I apologize for that. Anyway, I recently attended the annual state of communication for the Grand Lodge of my state. And among the people there were some honored guests, uh, grandmasters from all over the country, including New York, Illinois, Indiana. Um, but a couple of the honored guests that were there were some grandmasters of Prince Hall Freemasonry. And as a Blue Lodge Mason, I wasn't really familiar with the organization. I just kind of knew that they were kind of like us, but I wasn't sure what made them different from us. So I decided to do a little bit of research and um, make a video all about what Prince Hall Freemasons are. I actually found it quite interesting researching this video, some of the history behind uh, what Prince Hall Freemasonry is. So without further ado, let's get into the video. For those of you who don't know, there's a whole side to Freemasonry which I personally believe does not get enough attention. It is similar in many ways to Blue Lodge Freemasonry, with a few differences. The most contrasting of which is the membership. Prince Hall Masons are primarily made up of members who are of black or African descent. Now, not all Freemasons who are black are Prince Hall Masons, as Blue Lodge Masonry does allow members of all racial backgrounds but the origin story of Prince Hall Freemasonry has its roots in one of the most controversial eras for black people in America, and today we are going to discuss how it came to be and why it has had such a long-lasting impact on masonry as a whole throughout the world. To start, what does Prince Hall even mean? Is it a large corridor where royalty holds large banquets, or perhaps a gathering area where people hear doves cry in 1999? <laughs> Sorry for the joke. No, Prince Hall is the name of a man who struggled with adversity and fought for equality among all men interested in the ancient craft. Prince Hall was born on September 14th in the 1730s, presumably somewhere on the east coast of the United States. The exact place and date are unknown, though, due to poor record keeping. It is common theory that by age 11 he was enslaved by a leather worker by the name of William Hall where Prince quickly became an apprentice of the trade. Through this, he was able to learn to read and write, which was considered uncommon among slaves at the time. According to a PBS documentary called Africans in America, he had a relationship with a woman by the name of Delia, with whom he had a son named Primus, in 1756. In 1762, he joined the Congressional Church at 27 years of age and married an enslaved woman by the name of Sarah Ritchie, who sadly passed away in 1769. In 1770, Prince Hall was freed by William and shortly after married Flora Gibbs of Gloucester. He would also go on to marry a woman twice by the name of Sylvia Ward Hall. Hall moved to a home in Boston and became a master in leatherworking and owned his own store selling an array of goods. But when the American Revolution happened, his efforts would be focused on the war by crafting drum heads and other leather goods for soldiers. Hall was a supporter of enslaved and freed blacks to serve in the colonial army. It was his theory that if black people in the colonies aided in the revolution, the new America would be more tolerant of minorities and free all those currently enslaved in the British-controlled America. When he petitioned for black involvement in the military to the Massachusetts Committee of Safety, his proposal was declined. England, however, would use this petition to try to gain ground forces in the war by guaranteeing freedom to any black American who joined their side and fought as soldiers in the British Army. Soon after, the American colonials would reverse their decision and allow Hull's request to come to fruition. There were six men by the name of Prince Hall to fight in the war from Massachusetts, and he was believed to be one of them. Who would have thought that Prince Hall would be such a common name? When the war ended and America gained its independence from the British Empire, the promise of freedom was completely abandoned, but Prince Hall would not abandon his fight for equality among all men. He proposed legislation hosted community events and educational forums for black Americans, and even put on theater events to help improve the esteem within the community. It wasn't long before the war when Prince Hall would become interested in Freemasonry, as it was rooted in the ideals of liberty, equality, and helping fellow men. 
He petitioned to join the all-white St. John's Lodge in Boston, where he was quickly blackballed. If the American Masons would not allow him and other black men into their lodges, he had to get creative and start looking elsewhere. Paul and 15 other black men would petition to the Grand Lodge of Ireland and on March 6, 1775, became initiated by Lodge Number 441, a lodge which was based within the British forces in America. Once they were raised as Master Masons, Paul and others would found African Lodge Number 1, and he was named its first Grand Master. They weren't quite in the clear yet when it came to equality, though. Black Masons were allowed by Blue Lodge Freemasonry to participate in the St. John's Day procession, bury their dead by Masonic rites, and meet as a lodge, but they could not confer degrees or perform other ritualistic functions. Unable to create their own charter, African Lodge No. 1 would petition to the Grand Lodge of England and some time after were granted full abilities by the then Duke of Cumberland. Their lodge number would change to 459 under Prince Hall's charter in 1797. African American lodges would begin to be chartered throughout the United States and create fellowship among men across the country. When Hall died in 1807, African lodges would declare their independence from the Grand Lodge of England and rename its organization under the title of the Grand Lodge of Prince Hall Freemasons in honor of his lifelong efforts to break down the walls of racism and allow black men to be a part of what was once an only white fraternity. In the words of Hall himself, My brethren, let us pay all due respect to all who God had put in places of honor over us. Do justly and be faithful to them that hire you and treat them with the respect that they may deserve. But worship no man, worship God. This much is your duty as Christians and as Masons. In his lifetime, Prince Hall would also become an activist in black education, community activism against slavery, and the protection of freedmen from kidnapping slave traders. He also became somewhat of a religious leader, citing Bible verses to combat against slavery. As of 2015, there was recorded to be 40 Prince Hall Grand Lodges with 5,000 lodges under its umbrella across the United States, Canada, the Bahamas, and Liberia. Since its official establishment, over 300,000 Prince Hall Masons have been raised to the degree of Master Mason, which is a number that their founder would be incredibly proud of if he was around today. Modern Prince Hall Lodges also promote family involvement through its close ties to the co-ed Order of the Eastern Star, in which both Masons and women within their families can participate in ritual and fellowship together. Although Prince Hall Freemasons are a different organization than Blue Lodges on paper, the two are very accepting of each other and fully understand that Masonry in general is an organization that promotes equality among men, charity towards those in need, and the tenet of the fraternity, which is to always work towards self-embetterment and being the best man that you can be, ideals that Prince Hall himself fought a lifetime for. I will leave you with this clip from an interview with a Prince Hall Grand Master. It's a pleasure and an honor for me, as a Prince Hall Mason, and as a man of color, and as the 78th most watchful Grand Master, following in the footsteps of so good a man as Prince Hall, we tried over the years to keep his legacy forever, as long as we travel this earth will always cherish his memory. Thank you for joining us in another edition of the Eleusinian Society. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to see more videos.